Today we hear about a resurrection, which looking out on the crowd, I, I feel like we, we all need a resurrection today. <laughs> After uh, three days of joyous, uh, successful, but exhausting festival. So today we're talking about a short narrative called about the widow of Naim. The widow of Naim. And what's happening here? A young man, her only son, has died. And as Jesus is entering the city of Naim, this funeral procession with a large crowd is coming out. We, we face here the tragedy of death. And not just death, but the death of a young man. The most tragic kind of death of a young person which always, as you may notice, seems to attract more of a crowd. The younger the person is, the more tragic we feel it is. Really heightening the absurdity and tragedy of death. So Jesus comes into contact with this large crowd and accompanying the bier that's carrying the body of this young man is his mother, who the text tells us is a widow. So not only has she lost her son, but she's already tasted the bitter cup of death. She's lost her husband and now her only son, which means the readers would have understand, understood in the ancient world that this meant a dire situation for this woman. Not only had she lost the love of her husband and her son, but she had lost the protection of a man in a patriarchal society. She was left to her own devices now. She had no means to provide for herself, no protection. She was completely abandoned and at the mercy of those who would help the poor. This is why the Old Testament constantly reminds us to help the widows and orphans because they were completely without protection. They were completely cast upon the mercies of those who had. So this tragic situation comes to Jesus. And this simple narration really encapsulates the whole gospel, the whole meaning and purpose for which the Lord came to earth, because the Lord didn't come to be a great teacher. There have been many great teachers throughout history. The Lord came to defeat death, to defeat death. He came to save us from the last enemy, the ultimate enemy, which is death, because man has not received anything more precious than deliverance from death, which only God can give us, no one else. Death is inherent within our createdness. It is something we cannot avoid. God created us mortal. He didn't make us immortal. St. Paul tells us in 1 Timothy 6.16 that only God is immortal. Nevertheless, while he created us mortal... God wanted us to become immortal. He wanted to share with us his immortality. But man, in the Garden of Eden, decided to turn away from God, to, to declare himself God, and in this way bring himself and the whole of creation with him face to face with death, corruption, sickness. So this is why the Lord came, to heal us from this tragic situation of death. The passage today tells us, it says, when the Lord saw this pitiful sight of the funeral procession of the young man, it says, he had compassion on her, the, young, the widow. The Greek word is esplachnisti, esplachnisti, which means it came from his guts. That kind of compassion and empathy we have for someone when it really moves us internally with compassion. This is the kind of compassion the Lord had on the widow. He shared man's pain and indignation against death. Because God does not want death. God doesn't want man to suffer from death. He wants us to be immortal with him. And this is why the Lord came with this ultimate goal, to suffer, to die, and to rise again, to give us a share of his immortality. So today's passage, the miracle of the resurrection of this young man of Nain, is precisely an indication, a model, an example, a foreshadowing, a taste of the victory over death that Christ would win for us. The Lord wants to declare this victory over death with today's miracle. So let us observe then how this miracle is achieved, 
how this victory over death is achieved. From the passage, it's clear that the Lord has the power over death. With a simple word, just like the Lord God in the beginning of Genesis created life out of nothing simply with his word, so the Lord also today with his word gives a command to the dead young man to rise. But that's not all. Not only does he say and speak this man back to life, but it says in the text, he touched the beer. He touched the beer. Why? Was his word not good enough? The same word that created the heavens and the earth, the animals, man, all everything that lives? No, because the, he touched the beer because he wanted to demonstrate to us the condition for defeating death. The condition for defeating death is communion with Him. And not only just communion with Him, but I would say physical communion with the Lord. This is why the Lord left us the Eucharist that we we celebrate today and every Sunday. The Eucharist is the way to defeat death. The body of the Lord. We come into contact and communion with Him. The body of the Lord touches us. We touch it. We embrace his whole body to become one with him. This physical communion gives us life. And it's not just this. There's another interesting detail in the text that I would like to point out. It says, as soon as the Lord resurrected this young man, it says, he gave him to his mother. He gave him to his mother. The same mother who would have had no one without him. What do you do with resurrection? What do you do with immortality if you do not share it with others? The resurrection of a body, of an individual, has no meaning. The resurrection takes place in order for him, this young man, to enjoy life with others, his relationship with others, above all, his mother. But all those who are in his life, who who love him and whom he loves, Resurrection and immortality without love, therefore, have no meaning. It is an individual resurrection, which means that it will die, he will die again. In this way, the Lord reveals that in our resurrection, no matter how much immortality God grants us, no matter how many virtues we may have, we will not be isolated individuals. We will be a communion of persons. We will be bound by relationships of love. Because death aims precisely to hit at this. Death wages war against love. It aims not only at the dissolution of the body, but at the dissolution of relationships of love. It's here that death wants to do damage to our relationships. And it's precisely here that the Lord comes to heal. To heal man from death and to restore him to a communion of love. So we can understand now, brothers and sisters, why it is so important to be in communion with the church in order to gain victory over death. No matter how holy we are as individuals, no matter how many virtues we may have, it is not possible for us to defeat death on our own. To defeat death, we must be placed in a communion of love with others. In other words, we must go through the communion of love that is the church order to defeat death. And this is precisely what the church offers us. And it offers us this first and foremost in the divine liturgy, which we are now celebrating. What is the divine liturgy? It's the space in which the separation brought about by death is overcome, and the dead and the living are united, communing with each other in the body of Christ. For those who are taking our book study, we learn that in the service that precedes the divine liturgy, We take the loaf of bread that is offered by the people and we offer crumbs out of it for each of the living that we are praying for and each of the dead. And we surround these crumbs around what is what will become the body of Christ. All of them then go into the chalice. We all commune, even the dead, through this ritual, through this sacrament. The dead also commune with us and with God. We are united We are celebrating the sacrament of the victory over death, the sacrament of immortality. The divine liturgy bridges that divide between the living and the dead. 
We cannot attain this immortality as individuals. We celebrate it only as a community, as a church. This is why we do not attend the Divine Liturgy as individuals. We come to church to meet with others. We learned also in our class that in the Orthodox Church, a priest cannot perform the Divine Liturgy by himself, unlike in the Catholic Church, for example. We cannot do it. It is not permitted. There must be at least one lay person present because we cannot perform this individually. We must have a community, a relationship of love. This is the condition for the Divine Liturgy. This is why we come here to meet one another and to celebrate this victory over death together. So in the face of death, brothers and sisters, our only consolation is that we will receive our loved ones back again and see them again. And the church has nothing more valuable to give us than the sure knowledge that death will be defeated, just as it was by the Lord in today's gospel passage. And that just as the living and the dead enjoy communion with us in Christ, in the church, so will it be in the kingdom of God. The last enemy, the ultimate enemy, death, is defeated. Amen.